Do you want to maximize your success with NCUA? Join Mark Trichel as he shares with you the insider's view on passing your exam with Flying Colors. The With Flying Colors podcast is sponsored by Credit Union Exam Solutions by Mark Trichel. If you would like to work directly with the Credit Union Exam Solutions team and receive support to optimize your results with NCUA so you save time and money, visit us at marktrichel.com to find out more. Hey everyone, this is Mark Trichel with another episode of With Flying Colors. Happy 2023, happy new year. This is the first podcast I am recording in 2023, and I want to take a look back and I want to take a look ahead on some things here on the podcast and some things at NCUA, and then just a general discussion relative to how those two things might mix together. So it was 11 months ago I'm that I launched with Flying Colors, the podcast, and my goal at the time was to do a weekly episode. In the first 11 months, I achieved 66 episodes, so that's pretty easy math. 66 divided by 11 was six episodes a month, so I achieved my original goal. So that's about one and a half a week, and the target again this year is going to be at least weekly, and then occasionally a second episode when it makes sense based on news that's going on or thoughts and ideas that that I have as a result of my discussions with my team members and or my clients. So it's been a great year. I want to thank you for listening, and we should end the first year, 12 months at between 9,000 and 10,000 downloads. So that's about at least 750 a month on average. And it grew continually during the year. I'm hoping to double that in 2023 or for round numbers, hopefully 20,000 downloads in 2023 or over the next 12 months since I'm actually one month uh, beyond my calendar or my podcast year starts at the end of January as opposed to the beginning of January. All right, enough on that. At the end of the last NCUA board meeting, Chairman Todd Harper talked about things that they achieved in 2022 and things they had planned for 2023. The items that they mentioned in 2022 were the merit program was finalized and that also allowed them to shift from camel to camels. That's a good step, a necessary step. There were legacy challenges with the old system Aries. You know, much discussion at the board level about the cost of the program and where it's expensive. What do they say? That if you implement a program, the only guarantee is that, or a new software program, the only guarantee is that it will take longer and it'll cost more. And I think both those having been around when the at the infancy of the merit program being discussed and wanting to be built, that indeed did happen. But the program does work. I've heard generally good things from my clients on it. And Todd and out again, was just summarizing in 2022. And that will likely lead to better offsite portions of exams over the long term. Todd also mentioned that they are going to deploy information security exam program. I did a little background review on that because I remember that did come up. And here's a quote from NCUA in the budget document, I believe, that they just approved in December. And it states that in 2022, the NCUA piloted a new and updated information security exam program. The NCOA established a working group of regional and headquarters staff to review and incorporate changes into the program to be scalable to the institution's complexity and size. The NCOA is providing initial examiner training in the fourth quarter of 2022 and will deploy the improved program with the 2023 examination cycle. My expectation is that these will likely be some exam steps and questions that they ask at the examiner level. They have not added any specialists in this area. So my instincts are telling me that this new program is just a better way to ask questions, a better way to potentially gather that information, put it within merit, and that you will see a continued footprint on this. Not that there hasn't been a footprint on this. I've got a lot of clients that have had some pretty robust examination findings and or document resolutions on this. I do know that one of the big players in this arena at NCUA 
over the last several years is retiring, either retired at the end of the year or will retire in a month or two, probably to get all this training done. And that'll be a big loss at NCUA. But again, this is something you'll see a continued increased footprint by NCUA with this new program being launched during your next exam, essentially. Todd talked about chartering four new credit unions, which, boy, going back for many years, that's probably the highest in you know, 10, 15, 20 years. So that's an interesting development and a good one. I think NCUA should continue in that arena and charter as many as they can, because even if they fail, the cost is so minimal to the insurance fund, it's irrelevant. And if a few of them make it, I think that's a really, really major achievement, particularly if they can serve members of modest means. He also mentioned the risk-based capital standards being implemented. Finally, that took quite a bit of time. Those rules that were approved were essentially in place or proposed before I retired and also before one of my team members, Steve Farr, retired because he wrote most of that. Generally speaking, it's a good change. And I'll just leave it at that. If you have any questions relative to implementing it and how it might impact your credit union, reach out. They talked about the simplified CECL tool that... They launched, which I think is going to be good for small credit unions. I don't have a lot of feedback from credit unions in particular on on that. And I will say that as much uproar and fanfare there was on this topic, it seems to not be that big of an issue from the conversations I've had with my clients. They also, in 2022, moved ESIP, Treasury, Secondary capital subordinated debt for many credit unions, which turned out to be a 30-year opportunity to have very low-cost subordinated debt. And in light of what's happened since everybody applied for that program and where rates have gone, anybody who was wise enough to pursue that is looking even wiser now because the cost of secondary capital or subordinated debt has gone up because of what's happened with the Fed rising interest rates. Todd also spoke about what should be coming to the NCUA board meeting soon in 2023. He mentioned the interest rate risk ceiling. Uh, for loans made by federal credit unions. My recollection is that will probably be capped at 21%, although theoretically they could have it at 18%, but I'm hopeful that 21% is where they'll land on that. And you could probably expect that in at the January board meeting since he mentioned it at the December board meeting. He also mentioned NCOA's annual performance plan and that will be in the January board meeting. My recollection on that is they need to do that legally by February, and they always strive to get it done in January, if not at the December board meeting when they do the board budget. Now, the annual performance plan for NCUA links to NCUA's five-year strategic plan, and it also links to something I did a podcast on last year on enterprise risk management and NCUA's risk appetite statement. And when I did that podcast, there were some questions as to why the enterprise risk management appet- risk appetite statement didn't have a lot of details in it. And that's because NCUA puts those de- details in the annual performance plan. Now, that's about a 50 or 60 page document that, again, links to the strate- strategic plan. It establishes the missions and goals and also sorts of things that the board's going to be looking at this year and how they're going to measure that. And it's also linked to whatever happened in the budget in 2022. So I always like to look to that document and see if there's a few nuggets that you can pick up on some new priorities, or if they're not new priorities, at least priorities that have been elevated. When when that document comes out, when the board votes on that, I'll give it a read and I'll probably do a separate podcast on that topic. There's also going to be a request for information on climate-related financial risk. Now, this has come up in a couple sentences in either a strategic plan draft or in budget draft, I believe in 20, the, the draft for the 2022 budget and has not really gone anywhere, but I'm hearing, well, and Todd mentioning it means he has the opportunity to get, up, to get it on the agenda. To get it on the agenda means he has one of the Republicans that's willing to vote to put it on the agenda, and perhaps both of them. But this is a very Democratic or Republican, generally speaking, tied topic. So that shows to the cooperation that the board has right now. And that's always a good thing when there can be people meeting in the middle on things. I'll be very interested in just in reading this and seeing 
how how they frame it up to credit unions to request data on this topic. Todd also mentioned field of membership. And, you know, that's always a heavy lift. I don't know if you'll see that in January, but hopefully, well, interesting things comes. Do you do it in February before GAC because you want a big announcement? Or if it's not going to have as much teeth in it as people at GAC might want, maybe you'll see this item slip to March. My guess would be um, that they're targeting either February or March. My guess would also be that it's going to be great to see them nibble around the edges. It would be greater if they could hit a home run on the field of membership side. But the challenge with that is to hit a home run, you need changes to the Federal Credit Union Act. And, you know, ultimately, when credit unions are allowed to say that phones are your branch, that will, to me, be when you can signify victory on the field of membership side of things. But of course, the American Bankers Association and banks in general will fight that night and day. And I also believe that doing that would probably be a bridge too far as it relates to the current version of the Federal Credit Union Act. So while I'm hopeful that there may be some positive things in the field of membership proposal that's coming forward. I'm also optim- also kind of a bit of a skeptic that it might not go as far as people are hoping when they hear that there might be change. All right. So that, so that kind of summarizes some things that, that Todd spoke about. Now, other things that happen in January and here in the first quarter is NCUA comes out with their priority letter to credit unions on what their exam priorities are going to be. I know we always try to get that out in December, but for some reason it always would land in credit unions in January, even though the year has technically started. And last year, NCUA released this letter on January 18th, which is 10 days from when I'm recording this right now. And in that letter, I'm not going to go into great details because I did a couple podcasts on that um, right out of the gate last year. NCUA went from seven or eight priorities the two previous years to 11. The letter got much longer, and yet at the same token, they did not expand staff substantially or in in any real way. So when you have, what, a 30%, 40% increase in priorities, but you don't change uh, your resources, that means that some things, while you say they're priorities, it's hard to actually make them a priority. One of those examples would be they added electronic payment systems as a risk. I'm going to take a drink here to wet my whistle. Electronic payment systems, and they added specialists last year, but they didn't get the specialists hired until the end of the year. So there wasn't really anything that got added last year to the priorities, but it signaled that was going to be something they're doing. And once they get these people up and running, that will be you know a priority that you're going to have to deal with. Now, another takeaway from that old letter, as so looking back and then looking forward is that they had interest rate risk and liquidity discussed at the bottom of the letter. So interest rate risk was the 11th listed priority out of all the priorities in the letter. And by the way, the first was loan quality and such. So loan quality, because they were expecting potentially from the pandemic that that loan losses would be coming, would be increasing. So they put that number one, that didn't happen. I think it was a good anticipation, but the reality is it didn't happen. And then what also happened was people didn't expect the Fed to do what they were doing with such quick increases in rates. And there were adding that to the inflation environment that we've had. There's been a lot of credit unions that have had to borrow more than they ever have before, borrow for the first time. The share growth was minimal or negative for many credit unions in the third quarter. We don't have the fourth quarter data yet, but I'm looking forward to seeing that. And, uh, So looking forward, when this letter comes out, whether it's this next week or a week from now, I'm expecting liquidity risk and interest rate risk probably to be their top priority. Another thing that happens internally at NCUA is right before the end of the year or right at the beginning of the year, they have their scoping document, which is an internal document where they determine where they're going to spend all of their hours during the examination. I would bet that that is pretty robust in expanding interest rate risk and liquidity risk at credit unions. And the reason I'm saying that is the topic of the day for many of my clients, my old clients and my new clients coming on that are going through exams are getting hit pretty hard on this 
area of operations. And it's something that, you know, I've got some podcasts on it. I interviewed Todd Miller of my team on liquidity, on net economic value, which relates to the interest rate risk. So it's going to be a very interesting year on this. I will also say, looking back, I did a short podcast on the trends in camel codes, and they started to, they were at all-time lows and are at, generally speaking, at all-time lows, threes, fours, and fives. That's definitely shifting, and I think it will probably be a shift through all of 2023. So I'm predicting that the number of code threes and credit unions, when NCUA does their share insurance report quarterly, that each quarter in 2023, there will be more code threes, fours, and fives in total than there were the quarter before. And some of those will merge out. So over time, that number may trickle down by the end of the year. But I'm definitely seeing trends in that area. And SUA reported trends in their, that area the last quarter. And uh, let's see, again, on the priority letter that's coming out, consumer financial protection is always on that priority letter. And a reason that you could expect that to continue to move, to move well, in the priorities is because Chairman Harper is very passionate about it. It is because the NCUA board approved new specialists in 20, in the 2023 budget for Bank Secrecy Act and for consumer compliance specialists. So you can look at those two as in a couple of different ways that they're creating career paths for people in that arena to get higher paid and, and to get more training and to hire better people from the outside. And collectively, you end up then having a better, stronger program, which is good for NCUA and good for your interactions with NCUA on that topic. But you can expect to see probably more questions on that arena. And one of the things that I think we're going to, that I'm very interested in seeing and how they talk about it in the 2023 letter is as it relates to share overdrafts, because on the topic of share overdrafts at the in the letter to credit unions there was a discussion let's see uh, they specifically said the one of the priorities that NCUA was going to have during their exam was overdraft programs and as it relates to overdraft programs they spoke that or the letter said that examiners will request information about a credit union's policies and procedures governing its overdraft programs and the monitoring tools and audit of its overdraft programs, as well as the communications it provides to consumers about such programs. We anticipate using this documentation for a fuller review of credit unions overdraft programs in 2023. Bold, underlined, italicized. That's me bolding it, underlined it, and italicizing it for you. It's not done so in the letter, but they signaled that they are going to have a fuller review of credit unions overdraft programs in 2023. And they're going to base that review on the information they gathered in 2022. So I'm interested in seeing what they say about this in the annual performance plan I mentioned. I'm interested in seeing what they say about this in their exam priority letter. And then that exam priority letter oftentimes will be discussed when the three board members go to the CUNA Governmental Affairs Conference, which this year is at the end of February, beginning of March. They each have an opportunity to speak. Last year, when Chairman Harper spoke, he recited what I just told you about the overdraft program and what they were looking at doing on consumer compliance. So I think we'll see something in the letter to credit unions. And I think we'll see Todd speak to this most likely at GAC. So you should be looking at, you know, your programs in that regard. And you know, there's all sorts of stuff out there and what's going on with the CFPB on this arena with banks going away from it. And you know, it's something you really want to make sure you get ahead of. And I'll probably do something on the CFPB arena this here in the first quarter. But once I see what NCUA is going to do on that relative to that. Another takeaway for 2023 is that credit unions and NCUA in particular continues to be challenged by the great resignation, finding the right number of people to, to work to match the number of vacancies you have. I know that there's a statistic out there of the number of jobs that are out there per relative to the people that are unemployed, and the number is at all-time highs, and it's hard to get fully staffed. That's always NCOA's goal, but I think they're having more and more challenges in this regard. I've seen some impacts on that in exams that happened at the end of the year, 
where NCUA was wanting to finish them and needing to finish them to meet their goals and objectives. And the exams were perhaps drawn out a little bit longer. And then we had some that were a little bit rushed at the end of the year. And when that happens, you don't get the opportunity to provide the appropriate feedback to what's in the report. Because again, everything you get should be a draft when you're working on document resolutions, when you're working on examiner findings, et cetera, et cetera. You should have the opportunity to influence that language, those due dates, and other things that might be stated relative to the fact pattern to, that led to the examiner findings and document resolutions. So I'm expecting, hopefully, that NCUA in 2023 will be able to, to, to do the hiring to get their staff fully staffed. I think that's a lofty goal in the world that we're living in. The other issue is, as we potentially or are in a recession, I think we're going to, again, see the camel codes degradation. Many examiners have never been around during a recession. And as a result, they're going through some more difficult conversations than they've had before. And that can lead to potential kerfuffles, as they say. So in summary, 2023 is going to be interesting on many fronts. I'm looking forward to communicating with you via this forum, at least weekly. I've got some exciting guests to announce soon that I think you will really enjoy and will add value to the listener. Lastly, I mentioned the downloads. I appreciate you listening. If you like it, please leave a review on your favorite podcast app and please subscribe if you don't. I understand that from the data that about half of the listeners go in and listen to an occasional episode and half of them subscribe and download them. And I would love it if you would subscribe so that you could listen every week or at least see what the topic is to decide if it's something you want to listen to. All right. Well, that's it. 2023 is here. Thank you for listening. And I look forward to an interesting uh, year in the United States, an interesting year at NCUA, and more importantly, an interesting year in your credit unions. Thanks again for listening. This is Mark Treichel signing off with Flying Colors. Thank you for joining us on this episode of With Flying Colors. Subscribe on your favorite podcast app to hear future episodes where subject matter experts of all varieties will provide tips on how to achieve success with NCUA. If you would like to learn more about how we assist credit unions, check out our services at marktreichel.com. 